Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jillian Barry, and today we have an incredible guest in the house for you guys. We have Dr. Fred Bishy. He is a legend in the raw foods community. He has been eating a raw vegan diet for about 55 or 60 years now. He is 92 years old and he absolutely makes this lifestyle work. I think he is amazing and we can learn so much from him in this interview. My viewers, you guys have some incredible questions as well, which we will get to at the end. And let's get right into it. Hey, Fred, how are you? I'm good. Thank you, Jillian. How about yourself? I'm amazing. And I want to say thanks for being on. And I love just from coordinating the interview with you. I love seeing how you have such a busy schedule at 93. I noticed that with all these raw vegans I interview in like their 70s, 80s or 90s, you're doing interviews, podcasts, dealing with clients. I love it. Well, you know, at this point in my life, I want to do as much as I can to uh, to help people, you know, and then plus there's so much confusion now in social media because it's you know, people are recommending and people with, uh, you know, people that you know, like doctors and nutritionists are recommending different types of diets and they're bringing out all kinds of uh, scientific evidence to confirm what they're saying to a degree and, and talking about cases where people got better, you know, like the, now that the big thing now is the carnivore diet, a lot of people getting into the carnivore diet and claim people are getting better in the beginning, their pain is going away and People are very confused, and there's an element of true why that diet works at the beginning. It's based on what they're leaving out. It's not the animal protein. You're leaving everything else out. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, basically the primary requirements are to get clean air, you know, drink clean water, get adequate sleep, and then the fourth thing is get sufficient calories. So if you're eating a diet like the uh, carnivore diet and you're eating enough meat, you'll get sufficient calories. And because of what you're leaving out, your body will, the pain will go away. But it doesn't last in the long run. This is nothing new. This is uh, recycled information or information with a new suit of clothes going way beyond the Atkins diet when they first it was a carnivore type of diet. But years ago, there were athletes that tried that. And I, you know, guys like Arthur Saxon, who ate a high protein diet, was the strongest guy in the world at the time, had a great physique. He had a, 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 was a carnivore diet. And he died from kidney failure when he was 41 years old. So wow. there's nothing new. There's nothing new here. And a lot of people don't understand the concept of what you're leaving out. There's a lot of ways. I'm not a dogmatic guy. There's a lot of people come to me, don't want to eat a raw diet, don't even want to eat a vegan diet. And basing, understanding the concept of what you're leaving out, you can help them dramatically. So uh, the key, and everybody's got... You know, a lot of science, you know, a lot of people are quoting scientists and I hear in a lot of podcasts to justify what they're advocating. And they're really quoting, a, you know, you take a, a beautiful panoramic scene of the mountains, you take a snapshot of one area, you know, and you're ignoring the whole rest of the mountains. That's what they're doing. They take a snapshot and one specific scientific information to, to back up their narrative, forgetting about all the rest of the science that's out there. And this human body has so many variables based on what you leave out. And you could actually get away with quite a few, few things and be able to heal. So my, what I really want to do is try to, you know, settle some of the, um, the confusion because a lot of people really are confused. And with all of now, with all the advancements in, in science and computer technology, we are not getting healthier. We're getting sicker as a population. And a lot of people feel that they can't change their diet because there's a psychological component to hunger. You know, all addictions work through the hunger drive, which is controlled by the hypothalamus gland, the floor of your brain. Same thing with the sex drive, the hunger drive, all addictions, they work through the hunger drive. So once you're eating a diet of processed food, you become an addict. You're addicted to these delicious foods that are making... It's based on the pleasure concept, which is part of an addiction. You want to eat these foods. And I know people eating a bad diet in spite of the fact they know it's doing them harm. It could end up not only making them real sick, but killing them someday. But they can't control themselves. So that's why I believe in different modalities like hypnosis and, or, you know, just counseling people, talking about the psychological components and trying to get them through it. That's why I believe just speaking to a person you know, for an hour once and then just letting them out there on their own, they need guidance. They need like daily contact every week and, 
you know, maybe wean them into the, a program and not to overwhelm them with the information and let them know beforehand what kind of experience they're going to have. Because I, I have a good idea when somebody comes to me based on what's wrong with them and what the, how much information I'm going to give them they're going to follow. I can tell them what's going to happen, how they're going to go through a detox, how they're going to feel, like they're going to break out in a skin rash, they could have uh, di um, constipation or diarrhea. You know, they have they could feel real weak. You know, a lot of things can happen. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what I try to do. I try to, uh, you know, try to get the information out as much as I can. I do a lot of podcasts. A lot of people call me up, want, you know, want me to go on podcasts. And I go on, I do go on some podcasts with people out there to trying to do the same thing. And not everybody's in a complete agreement, you know, mm -hmm. people that are trying to do the right thing, but based on the concept of what you leave out, I just look and to see if they're advocating. If it's not compatible with what I do, God bless them. I just don't, you know, I don't do it. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't want to confuse people, you know? Yeah. And do you think if some people want to eat animal products in moderation, that they can still thrive on that long term or no? Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm yeah. not a big advocate of that, but don't forget, I don't try to clone people. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, people come to me, I try to meet them where they're at and accomplish their goal. Mm -hmm. Now, for me personally, I would never, you know, I, I'm, I, there's more, there's a morality to, for, after fasting, all the long time fasting I did. I was shocked what my experience it was. You come to a point where your consciousness develops where this is my personal choice. Everybody don't have to go, go with that. I would, you know, I would never eat an animal. No animal has to give his life up so I can continue to live. I mean, that's, I can live better without it as far as I'm concerned. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, the fire alarm was just going off in here when I said that. I think it's a sign not to eat the meat, but I don't know. I'm just, I feel better without it. And I'm just wondering, like the last few decades, I feel like especially humanity has really gotten off course with health. I mean, you've been around for a while. You're not, you're 92. So I'm just wondering in your opinion, like what, where do you think humanity has gotten off course the most? Like, what do you think turn it took that has been like the worst for us? Like the processed foods or like too much meat or barbecued food or gluten or dairy. It's all part of it. You know what I mean? Say the real culprit, though, the worst thing of all is, is definitely the processed food. The processed food is a modern day curse. That's what it really is. It's making, if you, you could get a person just to leave out the processed food, and this is a compromise. If you could get a person just to leave out the processed food and moderate the amount of animal protein, protein or animal protein they're eating, they're going to have a dramatic shift in their health. You know, they're saying, of course, if you can go to a person to, a vegan diet, to eat a vegan diet, uh, whether it's a starch-based diet or fruits-based diet, I mean, that's, to me, that's a step in a, that's a step up. You know, getting, getting enough protein is basically very simple. You know, I went years where all I ate was fruits and vegetables. I didn't even try to get more protein. I mean, I didn't even eat nuts. And I mean, I did a lot of experiment. And I think that's the reason, reason for that is that uh, years ago, I did a lot of long-term fasting. I fasted over 40 days, 40 days twice, 30 days. I don't even remember how many times, you know, a lot of times. And what happens, that is the most, and I'm not recommending people do that without professional guidance, you know. You got places like True North in California with Alan Goldhammer. They're, you know, they, they're really good out there. And the people need, yeah, from what I understand, they're doing the, uh, they're fasting people who have certain types of cancer getting great results. I believe that. I thought that years ago. I mean, so, and I, of course you want, I, I'm very careful what I say publicly. A lot of things mm -hmm. I say in private, I'm hesitant about saying publicly, you know? Yeah, of course. So you have a lot of leeway. And of course, I mean, I've been on a 100% raw food diet for more than half a century, more. And uh, if I didn't think it was good, I wouldn't be doing it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But once you do what I do, there's no turning back. You know, and people, I've seen people try eat a raw diet for, you know, for four, five, six, ten years. And somebody convinced them to go back to eat animal protein. They might have been in some kind of a dilemma. And they were told it was a protein deficiency. I've seen people got, you know, they got very sick doing that. And some of them didn't make, you know, they, they actually succumbed. I don't recommend people go back. If you're not ready... 
to go to a vegan or a, a raw diet, you know, go, you know, go on plateaus, you know, go, you know, go to a clean diet and go to a vegan diet. Then if you want to go to a raw diet, but, you know, sustaining yourself and sticking to a raw diet for a lifetime, it takes discipline. There's social ramifications, you know, your social, I'm, I'm a type of guy, I socialize a lot. I go out with a lot of people. I socialize with people that don't eat well, don't bother me, you know, and people know who I am. I don't try to, you know, tell people what to do in social situations. So people got to do, they got to do the research. You know, a lot of people don't do the research. They're looking for somebody, you know, to hang on to their coattail, some guru or somebody seems like, they got a lot of information or they're good scientists or maybe some doctor. And there are people out there now that are coming up. But I saw a couple of some medical doctors coming up and they're recommending, uh, you know, vegan diets with eating fruit for, for, uh, for people that are diabetics and they're getting them to reduce their, you know, their, um, you know, the overproduction of, uh, you no, know, they're getting to help them with the accumulation of fat in their muscle cells with their insulin resistance. Once you reduce the, the fat and then you're no longer insulin resistant, the receptors in the muscles will pick up, you know, the glucose, pick up the sugar. And you could eat pl plenty of fruit and be a diabetic if you, you, you reduce your insulin resistance, you know. And on a raw vegan diet, do you think it's important that we keep our fats low? Like our avocados and nuts and seeds and things like that? Well... If you, if you don't have diabetes, I mean, I think it's a good idea in general that you don't eat, you know, there's no sense eating a pound of nuts. It just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it doesn't. You know, if I eat, I don't even eat a lot of nuts. But if I, if I eat too many, I, I don't feel right. I get a little tired and things like that. If you can eat nuts, the best, of course, it's best to soak them or eat sprouted nuts. I buy nuts that are sprouted. You know, they're made a very, you know, they have... Uh, much easier on your digestion, you know, they don't have enzyme inhibitors, you know, mm -hmm. I love avocados, I eat, probably eat an avocado the, pretty much five days a week, you know, but I wouldn't sit down, eat, uh, you know, three avocados, but I'll tell you a little story that got me, made me aware many, many years ago when I was, uh, I was a raw fooder and I was, um, training for marathons and I was training for an ultra marathon, the 50 mile race. So I wanted in the beginning, when I first started, I was able to train 50, 60 miles a week, maybe more. But then I used to run out of gas and I used to, every other week I used to try to do a 20 mile run and I used to run out of gas. I couldn't figure out why. And it was the reason was I was not eating enough fruit. Then mm -hmm. I followed Dr. David Castilli's advice for half hour to 45 minutes after I trained hard, your body don't secrete insulin. So I ate, you know, a reasonable good amount of fruit, which I wasn't doing. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't overeating the fruit. So what happened, I would eat the fruit and within a very, very short time, I was running that 20 mile run like it was nothing. Wow. So I just wasn't getting enough calories and enough gas in my tank. You know what I'm saying? So um, now if I was eating... If I was eating a lot of nuts at that time, I wouldn't have had the endurance, you know what I mean? Because you have a lot of fat, you know, when eating too much fat, there might be some insulin resistance even on a raw diet. But on a raw diet, anybody's been on a raw diet like yourself, I mean, you can eat some avocados. I mean, I wouldn't eat a lot of them. You might not feel that good. So what I did, getting back to what happened, I wanted to see how much sugar I could consume and feel okay. So I was eating more and more fruit over a period maybe a couple months, I don't remember exactly, but I kept increasing the fruit and I felt euphoric. It was like euphoria. I mean, I know that wasn't a normal feeling. So my blood sugar wasn't going up and going down. It was going up, you know, and I was existing off that blood sugar training and everything. So then I wanted to see what would happen if I added in some honey. So I added in honey. I started eating honey. And when I was doing, I was eating... Uh, a lot of fruit, and I was eat. I ate a whole jar of honey very quickly. Well, it was unbelievable. So then, I what? In order to do that, I was eating no fat. So then, I wanted to see if I ate a little bit of an avocado. When I was doing all that sugar, 
And I was running like a wild man. In fact, I actually had an experience. I was actually running in the woods. I just let out with a scream, which is not normal. <laughs> so it happened. I ate a little bit of an avocado and I felt terrible. So your body, you can't eat a lot of fat and a lot of sugar in the same, well, you, you know, in the same few days or the same, the lifestyle you're making. Mm -hmm. You can moderate it or, you know, if you're a diabetic, then reduce the amount of fat so you're not insulin resistant. You don't have a lot of fat in the, in the, in the muscle cells or receptors so they could pick up the insulin. Sugar is not the problem with a diabetic. It's fat. And people keep telling mm -hmm. people with sugar. Mm -hmm. 100%, yeah. There's people out there telling people that, and they don't, people don't believe it. They don't know sugar's not the problem. It's the insulin receptors, you know. There's too much fat in the, in, in the, in the insulin receptors in the muscle, so the fat, the fat can't get in. So what happens, then your body, your pancreas, a small part of your pancreas produces insulin. Most of it produces mostly enzymes. So what happens, it produces more insulin. So what happens is that even if you're not a diabetic, your insulin, the amount of insulin you're producing is going up. So you're, you're suffering from hyperinsulinism. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. That's a precursor to a lot of diseases. That's what's called metabolic syndrome. So the key is, I don't believe in extreme. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, you know, people telling people to, you know, eat a you know, carnivore diet, high protein. I don't believe that. I don't believe in that people tell people you can live on fruit or just eat a lot of fruit. I've seen people do that. I eat plenty of fruit, but to live on fruit, I had, I knew a guy that tried that. He lasted eight years. He ended up dying from tuberculosis. Wow. I knew, yeah, no, nah, this is, you got to watch out. You know, and how, how do you think someone can make a diet work like how do you make this lifestyle work properly if somebody wants to do the raw vegan lifestyle correctly what is correct in your mind well make sure you're eating a variety of different i believe eating vegetables you know there's people telling people there's poisons and vegetables out there that's why you only have to eat animal protein it's that yeah. i won't even get into that you know there's certain things that are in vegetables are meant to repel insects you know if you drank a gallon of it, it might make you real sick you know that's but they that's where listen We've been indoctrinated into a healthcare system is based on abstract science. You know, all the years we're going by. I remember many, many years ago when I started a raw diet, I knew a doctor and I, he, he said that I told him I was going on a raw diet. And one of the a guy from Harvard said I was going to die young. You can't live on a raw diet, not enough calories and all that type. That's the key. It's, you know, caloric restriction. That's the key. You're going to be thin, your blood, mm -hmm. everything's going to be stable, you know. And do you think that's why sometimes people can't work, make it work? Like sometimes people do look not as good as other vegans. And then they say it didn't work for me. I was deteriorating. Do you think in most cases that is because they're not eating enough calories? Or do you think sometimes maybe it's just not right for everybody? Well, I mean, nothing. You know, there's a number of reasons why something might not be right for everybody. There's all psychological factors. You know, a lot of people, when I... I was 210 pounds of solid muscle when I, you know, I lost with between the fasting and raw diet, I lost probably 75 pounds. And while, while I was experimenting with this lifestyle, I fasted over 40 days a couple of times, which is people don't believe it. I also did a fast and was able to run while in a fast, but I don't really go into that. But they, somebody took a picture of me because it was controversial. A lot of people showed up at the park and I, I looked extremely thin. And a lot mm -hmm. of people said, if I can look like that guy, I don't want to be on a raw diet. But mm -hmm. I had been doing a lot of fasting. Um, it might not be for everybody, Jillian. You know, you got to be dedicated. And uh, sometimes when people can't gain weight on a raw food diet, what they need is the opposite of what they think. They need a fast, a, a, a supervised fast to slow down their metabolism so they'll gain weight on less calories. You know, that's how it works. Because a lot of people can't gain weight. They're eating protein shakes and they're speeding up their metabolism and they can't gain weight. And, you know, they're thin. So to tell them to go on a fast, to, it'll slow their metabolism down. They'll become more caloric efficient. They actually gain weight. So it's mm -hmm. not probably not, not for everybody. You know, why people can, eat, can follow up. A vegan diet or eat a small amount of animal protein in, in a plant-based diet. Plant-based diet 
is the way to go. I, you know, all this other stuff, people say, oh, we're carnivores. That's nonsense. We don't look like lions or tigers or big cat. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Every species of animal on Earth has a species-specific diet based on their biological design. Every animal. And animals are instinctual. They're not cerebral. We're cerebral. Animals eat their instinctively. They gravitate their diet based on their biological design. You know, you take a lion, a tiger, and eat a big cat. You know, you give them a bag of carrots. They're not going to eat it. Even if they're starving. They're carnivores. Mm-hmm. Every, different, every different animal is different. We're cerebral because we, we're able to apply reason and logic. We could eat, people eat the most bizarre things. And if you look around the world, you look at all these indigenous people, they eat different diets. And basically, like Dr. Weston Price, he did a, I don't know if you ever heard of the Weston Price Foundation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, I have. So they did a survey and he was, he was a dentist. They were looking at all these people that had beautiful teeth and they were indigenous people. Mm-hmm. And they thought it was because, you know, they ate animal protein. It was because they were pristine people. They had no cell phones. They, they ate everything was fresh, gathered, wild, yeah. hunted. So it was all based on what you left out. It wasn't because of their diet. Each, each group of indigenous people were different. They were eating different diet, but they were indigenous. So they came to a conclusion that was based on you have they advocate you drink um, you know raw milk, eat a lot of meat, eat eggs, raw eggs, and all that type of stuff. And because of what you're leaving out, everybody's leaving out processed food. If you leave out the processed food, you can probably eat horse manure to a degree and get away with it. Mm-hmm. Once mm-hmm. you understand what's happening, the human body is so heroic, it can, it can do things. But what are we biologically designed to do based on our teeth, our digestive system, hydrochloric acid, you know, our hands, every other thing? We are designed to eat a plant-based diet. There's no two ways about it, my estimation. You mm-hmm. know? And transformation is difficult. I was a big guy, worked out with weights. If you, if I showed you a picture, you wouldn't believe it was me, you know. And when I, and I was basically a healthy person, but when I went to, I was, a, I was living through a, a self experiment, and I studied. I, I hooked on to a lot of Europeans because the Europeans were ahead of us, you know. And I was, there was a lot of confusion amongst the natural hygienists. Got people were losing their teeth. There was people out in California eating raw foods, having problems, you know. Of course, they, you, you have, it's a good idea to eat a variety of different foods. I, I go by a whole food. You know, now, you know, science is trying to break, uh, you know, our diet down into macro and micronutrients. I don't think that's that important. Eating whole foods, your body is a sophisticated, sophisticated biological organism. It knows what to do. If we give presented with the right opportunity, far more than the best scientists, they're still, they're just coming aware now. You know, 35, 40 years ago, we told somebody who was on a raw diet, they, they thought you was out of your mind. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people are trying it. Yeah. And I'm wondering, it's, how did you find it? Like, how did, you, how did you discover this lifestyle way back when? Well, I met, I knew this guy. His name was Frank, and he was a natural hygienist. He's the guy that was the fruitarian. And he got, I tried to help him years later. He got tuberculosis. I told him he had to start eating more vegetables and everything, to, you know, to, uh, and of course, Chris, Christopher Jan Kershaw. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Mm-mm. Now, yeah, people should know who guys like that are. I mean, Christopher Jan Kershaw was trying to straighten out some of the people that were extremists that were into natural hygiene because he had a whole bunch of people that were living upstate and uh, they were on a, um, a raw food diet, mostly raw, raw food diet, eating mostly fruit. They weren't eating enough greens. And the first generation, everybody did fabulous. But the second generation, they started to have birth, de- birth defects like cleft palates and things like that. Wow. So he was, he's the guy that started with um, blended salads, which people call green smoothies today. He's the guy that started that. Yeah. You know, there's so much, there's so much to these stories, you know, and then people in Europe, there was guys like Otto Bukic, Ragnar Berg, Dr. Carl Otto Ali, Sergei Falanenov, a Russian guy 
they were fasting people with schizo had schizophrenia in Russia. And I hired a, an interpreter to speak to him. I think he's dead now a long time. And uh, I was, in those days, I was fasting a lot of people with great results, but I stopped because you can get in trouble now. You know what I mean? Just people just felt, I used to have to go to the house every day, monitor their vital signs. Mm -hmm. I don't do it no more. And mm -hmm. I actually fasted, fasted a, people, a, a girl like that come out of a psychiatric center who got better. Wow. But I, I'm leery about, you know, I'm very yeah. careful what I do now. Because, yeah. And then, you know, people don't, if they don't understand where you're coming from and they haven't seen what, what I've seen, you know, it's a, like I was going on Instagram. I'm a, I'm a God-fearing man. I believe in, I'm a Christian. And I, I, I made a statement that the human body had God-given remedial capabilities. Some girl attacked me, cursed me all out. We don't want to hear about that. All right, that's, you know, you don't want to hear it, but that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe we, were, we you know, I believe in, the, in the intelligent design. But I, intelligent design, I believe there was a, you know, something we come, this thing ha all happened by accident. There is some form of intelligence out there that, that led to all this. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm just wondering. I know you mentioned schizophrenia. I read a couple books a few years ago that said that gluten can be heavily tied to schizophrenia. And there were times in the past where they removed gluten from the culture, and then the schizo schizophrenia rates were like next to nothing. Do you have any thoughts on that, or do you think that gluten well, is? Really I, I, I believe you know. I believe that everybody uh, should not eat gluten, but some people. Are more gluten sensitive than others. Is that predominantly a factor in schizophrenia? No. I mean, if your people are eating a bad diet and they leave out gluten and they're schizophrenic, are they going to get? Are they going to get better? No, I don't think so. Not my experience. But gluten, you know, you know, it's uh, see, it's all based on what you leave out. If you're leaving out gluten, you're not leaving out the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got to try to make people realize that it's the processed food. Is processed food? Uh, an issue in mental illness? Of course it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, yeah. to get people to change. And then what happens, a lot of people go to, you know, they go to their doctor and the doctor say, oh, that's quackery. You know, I How have a girl. Come, go ahead. I have a girl come to see me today. Had MS. You know, had MS. It's gone. She's having a baby. She couldn't, she, she, she's fine. The doctor said, well, whatever. In the beginning, he said, no, you can't do that. Whatever, whatever you're doing, do it. You keep doing it because you're better. And what, do you, you feel like as a society, like we're getting healthier? Like, do you see things as getting better or not getting better? Like with health? I don't, I don't see. I, I think more and more people like yourself that are young are becoming aware of this and bringing up their children healthy or bringing them up on a clean diet. But in general, as a population, I think we're, we're, we're losing ground to be perfectly honest with you. I go to affairs, I went to a, I go to affairs with people here, 50, 60, who's got cancer, who's obese or, you know, overweight, who's got diabetes, all kinds of problems, you know? And you watch what people are eating, it's just- mm -hmm. And so many people don't connect it. And I'm wondering like, where do you think you would be right now had you not taken the raw foods path in your life? Oh, I'd be dead. I've had four brain concussions, numerous broken bones, because I was in the, you know, uh, uh, I had a bad case of the mold. We had to move out of my house. We mm. had mold, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was in the ground floor. But, you know, many, many years, I never even had a cold, you know what I'm saying? I, the last time I got, I was at uh, a baseball game. I got hit with a line drive. I had got a brain concussion from that. I, gee, I thought the first couple of weeks, my memory was bad, but I thought, gee, and I was, I'm not a young guy. I was in my late 80s. And I thought I was going to lose a lot of my memory, but thank God it came back, you know. Wow. And you're completely with it. Like you're, you're very smart, logical, totally with it. And I'm wondering like over all these years, has there ever been a time where anything's happened maybe where you've experienced any deterioration or anything and you've thought, oh, maybe it's not working the raw vegan foods and ever considered like going back to consuming animal products or changing course? Yeah. Jillian, I never, I never entertained the thought of going back. You know what I mean? I was in my 70s. I was doing things that, you know, I, I, in my late, not to boast, I'm not a, I'm not a boaster, but I, in my late, uh, I was about 85, 80, maybe 88, I don't really know. I pushed my grandson, ran 15 miles with him, pushing him in a carriage 
my three or four year old grandson. So yeah. why would I go back? If it's my time to go, I'm not going to go back to something I know is not going to work for me. Why, why would I go back to animal protein? I know it would kill me. I know it, but people don't understand why. They say, oh, that's, I'm exaggerating. No, I'm not. I have people come to me eat a moderate amount of animal protein, you know. Now, if you eat a lot of animal protein and you're, and you're, you're a bodybuilder and will it make you, will it blow you up? Yeah, of course it does. But it's probably going to make you insulin resistant. They don't live a long time. A lot of these professional bodybuilders, they're all, you got to see, they had to stop when it, only God knows what they were doing. You know, there's vegan bodybuilders out there that have good physiques. Are they as big as the guys that are doing all these crazy things? No. But who, who cares? That's like, that's a form of dysmorphia. Like some of these guys are so big, that's the way they see themselves, something wrong with them. You know what I mean? That's not a healthy. Some of them, I wouldn't want to, I don't know how anybody thinks that some of these people are exaggeratedly big from doing steroids and using testosterone. They think it looks good. I mean, some of them are almost grotesque. God forgive me. You know, I don't know if you ever seen what some of them look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have for sure. That's, yeah. that's a mental, that's a psychological thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, has this had, do you find the raw vegan lifestyle? I know for me, it's been a very spiritual experience. Do you think you feel more spiritual eating this lifestyle versus if you were eating animal products or processed food? Yeah, definitely. I'm, as I told you, I'm a Christian. You know what I mean? So to me, the, the fasting, fasting and prayer was a big thing. Actually, the fasting and prayer, you know, it, it's uh, long term fasting and prayer is one of the most dynamic experiences a person could have. A lot of people go into fast and they don't pray. They don't realize the difference that it makes, how it works. You know what I mean? I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers about everything. I can only share my experience that how dynamic it's, how dynamic and profound it is. In fact, in the beginning, uh, when I first fasted, it was difficult, you know, but then it got to the point, it was, it was, I liked fasting, like long-term fasting. In fact, when I got married, I mean, I did a couple long fasts. My wife pleaded with me to stop doing it because I was doing a lot of long, a lot of fasting. And of course you get thin. I was thin. And you know, I was a big, big husky guy at one time. I had bad uh, a car collision. I had a cross right shoulder. I never had surgery or nothing like that. I have no pain. I've had some pretty bad injuries. In fact, I got a a, a piriformis muscle that's torn now. I'm, I'm trying to heal that so I could get back to running and training again. You know, and I'm having wow. fun struggling with that. Wow. Yeah, it is. No, and do you feel do you feel happy at this age? Like, how do you feel? Oh, I'm I'm very happy. I'm happy. I got beautiful grandchildren. I got a good wife and everything. You know what I mean? As long as they take care of themselves. You know, I'm, as I said, I'm dealing with a bad, pretty bad injury, so it's, it's painful, but that, that'll go away. I'll get rid of it. When I get rid of it, I'll be doing everything I always do. I practice Qigong. You know, I don't know if you know what that is. Mm -mm. You know, Qigong is, okay. I practice Qigong and, you know, to me, I like doing that. You know, there's all types of uh, martial arts that people can practice. Yeah, I do. I'm wondering I, how has it been like with your teeth over the years, you know, because a lot of people think raw vegan and your vision, how's your vision and maybe your hair and things like that, bone, bone um, health? Well, as far as I know, bone density test is not accurate anyway. So I don't, I never went for bone density test. I mean, I've had some bad accidents and, uh, you know, my bones seem to be really strong. So um I'm not paranoid or fearful. I'm not that type of guy. You're not going to go. I have to run around and find out. If I listen, I'm 92 years old. Mm -hmm. If my last day was tomorrow, I had a fabulous life. You know what I mean? Right now, I feel like I could live a long time. You know what I mean? I got this one injury that's annoying me. It really is annoying me. But as a result of my car accident, I, I got such a bad, had such a bad car accident 35, 40 years ago over the years. You know, my body starts to compensate a little bit, but I mean, how do I feel in general? I feel wonderful. I certainly don't feel like a guy my age. I, you know, I don't, I don't need a lot of sleep. I don't have a problem with uh, that. I want to eat all the time or overeating. You know what I mean? And I'm not the type of guy that has to eat, you know, just people, you know, recommending people eat a lot of certain foods. I don't, I don't believe in eating any more than I need. 
I don't believe in recreational eating or eating as much as you possibly can. Like it's an Olympic event, who eats the most gets the biggest trophy. I don't believe in that. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people are addicted to food. And a lot of, even some people in the raw food community, mm-hmm. they're eating more than they really need. Uh, can you do it? You get away with it? Yeah, you probably can. But I don't believe in eating any more than I need. That's why when I stopped training real hard, I ate less fruit. I didn't need it. Plus, you know, I don't want to do anything. You know, fasting was a big key for me. Fasting was the big eye opener. Because a lot of people that on raw food diets have never fasted. They don't realize what an eye opener it is. It's the biggest anti-aging thing is fasting mm-hmm. or caloric restriction. Or oh, that's why a lot of people eat it. Years ago, people said, oh, if you wasn't fasting at least, there was one fasting expert, natural hygiene, that said, you're not fasting three days, you're wasting your time. That's not true. People are practicing intermittent fasting, extending their overnight fast, getting great results, getting more, you know, helping them to get control over their... Uh, making them more uh, insulin, you know, sensitive, so they're not insulin resistant. It's helping them with their appetite, you know. Helps in a lot of ways. There's no two ways about it. I believe in consistency. I believe that we have to be consistent with what we do. I'm I'm very consistent. People say, oh, what do you do? You must have a, you must cheat once in a while, or when you go out, no, I don't do it. Because I I know what's going to happen to me. If I do it, I feel terrible right away. Mm -hmm. I, I know what it's like. Me too. Yeah. And I'm wondering, what do you think about mucoid plaque? You know, there's a lot of people out there that say we have like a thick, hard plaque in our colon that needs to be cleaned out. Sure, and, yeah, and, you know. I, I've seen, yeah, I've seen people pull things out. Well, I believe in colonics and I believe in enemas when you need it. I don't believe in doing those things, if, uh, you know, on a daily basis if you don't need it. Yeah, yeah I believe that yeah, there is a lining in there, but there is, it's, it's normal to have a little bit of mucus in your, to line your, the mucous membranes of your colon. That's not abnormal. The mm. mucoid plaque is when people have a lot of stuff in there. It comes out, you know, it's thick. It's, you know, it's a, it's a nesting place for bacteria. Or it's not a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. And, and they have colon cleansers that, that's, that clean them out. There's a, I know a young lady from Brooklyn. She, uh, she tried a product and she showed me what came out of her. You know, it was pretty amazing what came out of it, you know. Mm-hmm. We'll call them mucoid and, plaque. It's always a good. Uh, there's some good colon hydrotherapists out there. You know, like a uh, friend of mine lives out in uh, Oregon. Mike Perrine. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's he's a Yeah, he's he's on he's on uh, Instagram. He's a knowledgeable guy. And then we have some people in Brooklyn, Donna Perone, and there's another guy named Tom. You know, everybody don't agree in everything though. I don't get excited if somebody don't agree with me. I, it's okay. That's their, that's their benefit, you know? Mm-hmm. And I want to ask you, you're in New York. I'm in Toronto. And I know a lot of people who watch are in cold climates. And they wonder, like, how have you made this work over the long term in a cold climate, the raw foods lifestyle? Well, you have to, you know, it's New York winters can be uh, um, pretty cold. And I would say the first three or four years that I was on a raw food diet. It wasn't easy, but I, I stay, the key is to stay warm. You know what I mean? And you, most raw fooders don't have a lot of body fat. So you're going to feel colder temperatures, right? So you have to, you know, I have some beautiful Irish wool sweaters that I, that keep me warm. So I keep warm and uh, I try to eat my, my food at room temperature. I don't eat anything out of the refrigerator. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, you can drink some hot water and lemon, hot water, anything hot, warm water. And there are warm, there are raw foods that tell you don't eat hot, don't drink hot water. That's, that's crazy. You know, that don't make any sense. You know, <laughs> that's up to them. But now, I mean, I don't like air conditioning because I'm a thin person. And, uh, but what I do is you wear clothes, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. psychologically, you do adjust, though. You do adjust. Plus, do a lot of deep breathing. There's all kinds of information out there now about breathing. You know, there's a lot of confusion. People telling people to, you know, do a lot of deep breathing and taking a ice baths and cold showers. And there's confusion about that. 
there's tremendous amount of information out there that's very confusing to people, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, you can you certainly that's I know a lot of people in on a raw diet and they move to tropical climates, they move to Costa Rica, they moved to Florida, like my friend Paul Nissan, he used to live in New York. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah, I interviewed him. Yeah. Yeah, he moved to Florida. He lives down in Florida. His wife just had a baby yesterday. Oh, wow. I'll have to reach out. Wow. So, um, yeah, you know, eating a raw diet in in a cold climate, it, it is challenging, you know. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, when you first went raw, do you remember like maybe the benefits you experienced and how different you felt? Like, do you was it like a big life changing time in your life going fully raw? Uh, well, I was I was always a health, very healthy person, and I was I had I, you know I trained with the weights, I was into athletics. After and after I had the car accident, I couldn't work out the weights. I got into ultra distance running and everything, so I was always a healthy person. But um, I mean, I used to get cold and, uh, you know, I, I did have plenty of energy because I exercise a lot. So the question is, was there a dramatic impact, impact on my health and my well-being when I went to a raw diet? Not really. I wasn't a sick guy. Mm-hmm. I, you know, every which guy was very active. Uh, I think the biggest impact, to be honest on, with me was emotional, psychologically and spiritually. Wow. And that mm-hmm. process, during that time, I became a Christian, but things were happening. You know, the fasting, you, whenever you fast, you eat a raw diet, the longer you do it, you know, the more your consciousness, you develop this consciousness, your mind opens up, you, me- you become, your memory and everything becomes very acute. Even now at this age, my mind is, you know, I, it's very, very acute. It's very focused and everything, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, Amazing. Know, Amazing. Yeah. You can't, I don't, I don't like to exaggerate. You know what I mean? A lot of people exaggerate things. I don't like to exaggerate. I tell people, you know, going on a 100% raw food diet, it's well, for a lifetime. If you, you got to know what you're getting yourself into. The benefits, you know, I don't want to exaggerate. If they're spectacular. If it's done correctly, mm-hmm. a variety of different foods, you know, not getting too locked up into one camp too much or follow one set of scientific information to justify that one camp. Meanwhile, there's a whole other, other information to support somebody that's not doing the exact same thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I listen, people, people got it. They have to, they should change their lifestyle. They should start at giving up the processed food. If somebody wants to go vegan, Go, by all means, go vegan. Whether you're eating 60, 70, 80, 90% raw and a certain amount of cooked food, then after you, 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 you're you stable at that lifestyle, then you can try a, you know, um, 100% raw food lifestyle. I'm, I'm leery about people that have no idea what they're getting themselves into, going on an all raw diet and, you know, ha- having a bad experience and then telling people that it was terrible, it didn't work for them. And I've seen that happen. Meanwhile, they never got through it or they never did it, you know, never did a fast or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. I'm not, you know, I'm not a zealot in any way. And I'm not dogmatic. I'm very, I know other experiences that can work too. Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of things I don't even mention to give me new, uh, a different perspective of what, what what's going on here. You can look, I did, for instance, I did extreme forms of exercise, you know. Are they good for you? No, they're not good for you. There's no reason for anybody to run 50 miles for your health. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I did it. You know, so I don't recommend, you know, there are people that run 100 miles. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, they might have problems with that, you know. So Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I think, uh, you know, when you're, when you're on this type of a diet, you only need a moderate amount of exercise to be physically fit. You can be very healthy and not be fit. But when you're on a raw diet, there were periods where things happened, and I had a, I laid off running for for months. I went right out because of my diet. I went right out and ran ten miles mm-hmm. because your body is biologically efficient. 
lot of people have to train because they're not bi biologically efficient. They don't have good oxygen uptake. They have to train by putting their body under that kind uh, under stress so they can become fitter and perform at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about supplements? I don't take a lot of supplements. I take B12. I, I believe uh, in, the, in the beginning, I, you know, I was kind of thinking I didn't have, wasn't necessary to take B12. So I took, I take B12. I take some vitamin D. Um, mm. I take some uh, astaxanthin, you know, Velasta. I don't take a lot of supplements though. They never, they don't sit right with me. I take them, I don't feel good. But I do believe some people, high quality supplements, you know, food grade, mm -hmm. I, you know, not, uh, not the uh, supplements that are just chemical substitutes for the real thing. I like getting all my nutrients from my food if I can, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'd love, to ask, I'd love to ask you some questions from my viewers. They love you and they have some questions. If you still have some time. Um, yeah. Okay. So Vincent said he would love to know what you eat in a typical day. Well, basically, uh, my diet consists of fruits, vegetables, you know, moderate amount of nut seeds. I like avocados. I eat an, I probably eat an avocado pretty much, pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I'm not juicing now as much as I did, which I'm going to get back into. I drink juices and I do make some smoothies, but uh, usually... I start off the, my start off my day like yesterday. I'll tell you what I did yesterday, and it's not the same every day. Um, I had some fruit in the morning. Well, it was like uh, three mangoes. Then in the afternoon, I had a couple of leaves of lettuce with it and a stalk of celery. And then in the afternoon, I had some more fruit. And then in the uh, the evening, I had myself a beautiful large salad with uh, sunflower lettuce in it, uh, mung bean sprouts. Uh, romaine lettuce. I, I threw some uh, uh, raw fermented sauerkraut in there. And what else was in there? And I, I had a half of an avocado in there. And uh, some days, you know, I might just drink juice you do, during the day into the evening. Then I have a salad. Sometimes in the evening, I might have some fruit. I don't eat too much fruit in the evening because to me, I don't, you know, I'm wide awake. I got, it gives me a lot of energy. So I, I won't go to sleep, you know, I won't mm -hmm. fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I believe my food varies though. I don't eat the same thing. I don't believe it's a good idea to eat the same food day in and day out. You know, sometimes I use arugula in my lettuce. Sometimes I actually like, you know, iceberg lettuce doesn't have much in the way of nutritional value. It has more than some people realize, but it's nice and crunchy. Sometimes I throw some iceberg lettuce into my salad or cabbage. Sometimes I take a, a head of cabbage, I cut it in half and I take the core out and I make like a bowl out of it. And then I fill it with uh, avocado and chopped up vegetables. And I mean, then I eat the whole bowl. I eat everything. I eat the whole thing. Or else I take, uh, I take the uh, collard greens and then I take a collard green and I fill it up with the uh, vegetables and sometimes sprouts, maybe some avocado, I wrap it up and I eat that, you know. Or I take, uh, sometimes I take, um, you know, nori sheets, raw nori sheets. Mm -hmm. I fill them with, up with vegetables and everything, I eat that. Hmm. I, like, so I like it, yeah. Yeah. Well, Owen Fox is wondering, did your eyes change at all? Like some people, you know, their eye color changes when they go up primarily yeah. on the big first now? I've never seen that happen to anybody. I've never okay. seen anyone's eye color change. Okay. And Gisela said, what would your advice be to those who want to be on this lifestyle and be bodybuilders in the competitive world? Well, uh, you're not going to be able to compete as a raw foodie that's a bodybuilder. You're not going to be able to compete against somebody that might be using testosterone and other things. Of course, they, they just get huge physiques. But I think uh, you could be... Um, you can work out with the weights, be very, very strong, have a very good, very good physique. And, uh, but as far as uh, be a professional bodybuilder on a raw food diet, I mean, you could do it, but you're never going to get massive like some of these other guys are doing, you know, it's not going to happen. I mean, I, I was in my, I don't know, in my late 70s, I was able to do three sets of 10 with 300 pounds in the knee bench. But I was only 145 pounds, so I don't look like no bodybuilder. So 
but you could be very, very strong. So, I mean, you're probably better off if you want to be a bodybuilder. I mean, you're better, probably better off on it. You could do it on a vegan diet, you know. Mm-hmm. You can eat a starch-based vegan diet, and you can get a lot more calories that way, and you could do it. But as far as competing against some guy with 23-inch arms and all that, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure of it. That's not healthy. Believe yeah. me. It's not a healthy way to go. Yeah. So Tamara said, what were the hardest parts of staying raw and how did you get through the rough patches when you wanted to switch to cooked food if you did? So you mean to go back from raw food to cooked food? Yeah, they're saying like, what have been the hardest parts of staying raw vegan for you? And what did you do to like get through those parts and not go back to cooked food? Well, I never had the desire to go back to cooked food. I mean, I have people eat around all around me eating food all the time. My wife, who eats a good diet, don't eat a, a, a raw food diet. And we eat together every night. I mean, she, you know, she eats some, a small amount of animal protein. And, you know, she makes rice and beans for her and everything. The smell's delicious. I smell the garlic and everything. But I have no desire to eat it. None. You know, believe me. So what happens, once you leave everything out, and you do it consistently, and you don't compromise, you lose the desire. And people are having a little compromise. They're compromising a little bit. They might be using too many spices or too much salt or something to stimulate their taste buds and their cravings. You just got to, if, listen, I don't want to mislead anybody. I don't want to force anybody into an overall lifestyle that's not... It might not be for them. It's not, it's not for everybody. But there's no reason why they can't eat a high raw vegan diet. There's no reason. you got all those good foods to eat. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to minimize the benefits of a raw, an all raw diet. But I'm not dogmatic. And I'm not a zealot. I don't want to get people into trouble, make people think that you can't be healthy. You can be healthy without eating an all raw diet. There's no two ways about it. And I have no doubt about that. No, I don't know if I should say that on your program. No, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I want everybody to be honest. Uh, and you know I so much, know. of course. I have some people that come to me, eat a moderate amount of animal protein. that's superbly healthy. Mm-hmm. Is that what I rather that I think they could better? Would they be better off on a vegan diet? Yeah, my opinion. Yeah, well, plenty of people disagree with me. But once you know the science, the real science, not the abstract science that you can you can always find science to justify you know, different diets. There's science out there that'll justify, you know, eating some radically wrong type of a diet. You know, I don't, I can't, I don't think you can find any science out there to justify eating a carnivore diet, though. I don't think it's out there. I would, I would love to see that, but I don't, but do people feel Mm -hmm. better in the beginning? Oh yeah. You could remember what I said in the beginning, you're breathing and getting clean air, you're drinking clean water, you're getting enough sleep. Sleep is more important than food. You can't go without sleep more than two weeks. You can go without food months, you know what I mean? So, and then mm-hmm. getting enough calories. So wherever you get enough calories, whether it's from fat, from starches, from sugars, you can last. So you can last on a carnivore diet for years. Plus, I'm sure they're taking supplements. If you're taking supplements to make up for the things you're not getting, you can last a long time, but it ain't going to last. It ain't going to last forever. I'm sorry, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. It <laughs> last forever. How do I know? I've seen it. I used to run a gym. I used wow. to, I was an Olympic type weightlifter. I was into the Olympic lifter, not a bodybuilder. I seen guys try that. They did not last. Believe me. Some guys lasted three, four, five years. And I and they were taking supplements. But they, you know. I don't recommend people try things like that. We are designed, as I said before, are biologically, you know, the way our anatomy is, we are, it's obvious to anybody that does, takes a look. We are not big cats, we're not carnivores. We don't look like a wolf or our dog. Look at his teeth, look at, you know, look the way his eyes work, look at his claws. We are designed to eat a plant-based diet. That's the way God made us. I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anybody, but that's what I believe, you know what I mean? We are designed to eat a plant-based diet. If you search the scriptures, you look at Genesis 129, even in the Quran, if you look at Hinduism, 
I studied all those different religions. You look at all these different things. You look at all the countries in the world, all the indigenous people in the world that thrive. You know, people say, what about the Maasais? What about the Eskimo, the Inuit Indian? They were on a, you know, uh, eating a lot of animal protein. First, first of all, the Maasai warriors, who are beautiful looking people, you know, and they're, 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 uh, they're nomads, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they, they, they don't eat what people think they eat. They do eat a lot of plants. But the, uh, the male, the average male only lives 42 years old. The woman lives 44 years old. Now, they live a, a life that they might die from injury and who knows, you know, with animals. But I don't really know. But they don't live a long life. The Inuit Indians, the Eskimos, they don't live long at all. They don't get heart disease. But they end up with other other serious problems. Now they live in adverse conditions. You have to take that into consideration that they live in very adverse conditions. So a lot of people quote, you know, people make quotes. They use the Maasais and, and the Eskimos, the Inuit Indians. They don't they don't seem to know the real facts that these they don't live a long time. Maybe for other reasons. Mm-hmm. You can't say they thrive on that type of a diet. And the Maasai, they, you know, they mix the, they tap into the, to the, um, the vein of a cow and draw the blood and they mix it with, uh, with, with milk and make like a, and they eat that. But they don't, they only do that in ceremonial times. You know, they eat meat and they eat, they gather up a lot of roots and things. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but all the different cultures in the world, you know, the, the basic premise behind people that live a long time is that, it's the boy to process food, whatever the diet is. You know, a lot of these people are running around barefooted. They're grounded. You know, they're out in the fresh air. They don't have cell phones. You know, they go to bed when it gets dark. They get up when the sun comes up. They're living a very natural life. So they could live to be 80, 90 years old. And because they have a lot of other things besides their diet, you know? Mm-hmm. Great point. So true. So true. I'm wondering. Have to- yeah. Uh, what happened? My laptop, something went wrong. The battery must have died. Oh, it's okay. Do you want to stop now? Do you have time for a few more questions or we can no, stop? No, I don't, no, I'm good. Go ahead. Let's you sure? go for it. Yeah. Okay. So the next question, she says, what are adequate protein macros for females who, who are in menopause or post-menopause and do these need to change over time? So how much, how much um, macros do you need if you're in menopause? Mm-hmm. And if uh, on a raw food diet or a vegan diet, or yeah, I think they're they're raw. I think they're talking about raw. And 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 when you're in menopause, yeah, they're wondering like what are adequate adequate protein macros for females who are in menopause or post menopause? Do these need to change over time? They're asking. Not really. If you're on an adequate diet, no, I don't think you need uh, menopause. Actually. For persons on a raw food diet, they should not really suffer from menopause. Menopause is actually one of the most beautiful times in a woman's life. The only thing is, she's not reproductive. She shouldn't be, she's on a raw diet. Very unlikely that she's having hot flashes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the only thing is, you just go into menopause, you're not really symptomatic. Like my wife went through menopause, she never noticed anything. Not that I knew. The only thing is that, you're not symptomatic. And there might be some other minor, minor things that, you know, as far as being intimate with somebody, which I'm not going to go into, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I, don't, I don't really think that if you're following the raw food diet correctly, you're doing a little bit of juice and you're making some smoothies, you're eating a variety of different foods, you're eating some fruit, don't worry about the sugar in there, eat a variety of different uh, vegetables, you know, don't be afraid to eat carrots, beets, and all those things, nitric Nitric oxide is very important for a woman that's going into menopause, to be perfectly honest with you. You could add some grated beets into your diet. I believe in eating some sprouts. You add some sprouts, sunflower, lettuce, and, and uh, mung bean sprouts. Eat some sprouts. They're very, very, very good. Mm-hmm. I don't think she, ha- I don't think she, uh, maybe she, maybe the question is, should she, would, does she have to take supplements? Is mm-hmm. that what you, mm-hmm. I mean, I think anybody that's on a raw food diet for a long period of time, just to be on a, to, to, um, to be safe is to make sure you're taking some vitamin B12. If you're not living in a tropical climate, take some uh, vitamin D. But I believe it's important every once in a while to go for a blood test to make sure everything's okay. 
If you're on a raw food diet, you're not going to come up in the normal range in a, in a regular blood test. You need somebody to look at your blood test that understands that you're on a raw or a vegan diet, that the, uh, your blood test is really, uh, they're just averages. You know, they take the average person out there and they average it out. So if you're on a raw food diet, your white blood cell count might be below the normal range and uh, your hemoglobin could be just in a lower normal range. So you need somebody to look at it that knows the difference between the average person that's eating a standard American diet and the person that's eating a real healthy diet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Great points. And the next question, Heather is wondering if you and your wife have kids and if they're raw, if you want to share that, if you want to keep that private. No, 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 I don't. I don't believe in being I don't believe in bringing a child up on 100 percent raw food diet. Yeah, my kids aren't raw. No, it's a mis it's a radical mistake because it's not that you can't do it. The only problem is that kid, that child is not making have. There's no. Uh, there's no part of the choice of following that type of a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What happens with, with some of these kids I've seen that were parents try to bring them up on an all-raw diet, they didn't last. When they reached the age of reasoning and they started going to school, if they weren't homeschooled, they started to cheat. They wanted to eat other things, and it's not really a great idea. I mm -hmm. think it's very unfair to try to bring, because you, you got this idea about raw foods, that you don't, you're imposing that on an unborn, on a child that just come into this world, has no, hasn't gone through the experience that you went through to come to that conclusion. So it's not a great idea. Can you, I think, I think kids get in trouble mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, so absolutely. It's not a good idea. It's not that it can't be done. Don't get me wrong. It can be done. A child could grow up on a raw food diet if you know what to do. You know how to make sure they provide everything they need for optimal growth. I remember one case, somebody wanted me to go to Florida uh, to be a, a witness in a lawsuit about some woman. This was probably 10, 15 years ago. And the poor woman was very misinformed and she couldn't produce breast milk and she had a newborn baby. And somebody told her to give the child carrot juice instead of breast milk and the child died and she, they, they wanted to send her to prison. So there's a lot of people out there that giving people advice based on, you know, some ideological type of thinking that's not scientific, scientifically uh, correct for, uh, uh, you know, you bring up a healthy baby, breastfeed the baby if you, if you could do that, you know, feed them a plant-based diet, make sure to be nourished in every way, you know, give, give them enough leeway so when they get, could be 14, 15 years old, go out into the world, if they go, but they get into a, you know, the way of the world that they don't suffer tremendously from the, eating such a good diet. You know, you can. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hundred percent. And the next question, they want to know your take on consuming aloe vera leaf proper properly. So, so they're under, they're wondering your take on consuming aloe vera leaf properly prepared, soaked with skin on and allion removed. I don't know. I don't work with aloe much. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure there. Yeah, no, I, I've never, I've never done that. I've taken, in fact, I got an aloe leaf in the kitchen right now. What I do is I, I fillet the leaf and I take the jelly out and I put it in a smoothie or sometimes I just take it smooth. As far as using the skin, I don't have no experience doing that. Okay. And the next question, they're wondering if you want to share this, if not, no problem. What your take is on Matt Monarch losing his colon? Well, I, I don't want to comment on that. Yeah. You know? I understand. And okay, we talked about the kids. Wonderful. What you eat in a day we talk people are saying, wow, he's 92. He looks amazing. Oh, yeah, this is a good question. Do you do you include salt in your diet at all? Rock salt, sea salt or Himalayan salt? I don't think so. But I wasn't sure. Yeah, I do. You I do. I, I, yeah, I include, include a, a small amount, not every meal. But um I've been doing it over the years. I'm not, I know a lot of people tell people not to use any salt, you know. I don't use any other condiments, uh, but I do use a little bit of salt. Not a lot. You know, if I have a salad, sometimes I might put a little garlic powder, which a lot of people tell you not to use it. I don't have a try. I don't eat garlic, though. Oh, you don't eat garlic? Yeah, I feel like I try to not eat as much garlic and onion lately. I feel like it affects me. And I hear some people say for spiritual reasons they don't consume that. Is, is that why you don't consume garlic or...? No, because it doesn't agree with me. Mm. If I eat raw garlic, and same thing with onions, you know, red onions. 
sometimes if I, I get a run onion that has a lot of allicin or mustard oil in it, I get nauseous right away. Mm-hmm. So if I, I smell it first, I could tell by the smell. Because you become extremely sensitive, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, I, you know, I, I do use a moderate amount of salt. I don't use a lot of salt, trust me, a moderate amount. So I don't want people to think you could just sprinkle Himalayan or Celtic sea salt or, or one of those salts, you know, use a lot of it all the time, you know. Yeah, it, um, yeah. Yeah. And someone wants to know, how do you handle the sensitivity for toxicity in the environment, like perfumes, Wi-Fi, chemicals, things like that? I'm, well, I'm, I'm certainly very aware of it, you know, and I could tell when it's in the uh, when somebody around me, you know, but there are a lot of people. I think there's a lot of people that um, have sensitivity. It's not ba- a lot of it's not based on on uh, a person's chemistry. I think a lot of people what happens. I, what I'm finding is that a lot of people that have anxiety, have some emotional issues of getting into this type of thing, looking for answers. So there's always something that bothers them, you know, and it's just the way, you know, but um, no, I, I don't, uh, I'm not a fearful guy and uh, I don't, you know, I'm not a, not, don't have a lot of uh, apprehension or anticipation about something bothering me. I know when it's there. Can I tell? Like if my wife uses nail polish remover, I'm in the room, I, it bothers me. I could tell right away, you know what I mean? I don't say mm-hmm. nothing, yeah. you know, I just accept it and it's, it's gone, you know. But th- there are certain things I could tell. Now I'm very aware of mold, mold, because mold almost killed me. My experience with mold was horrendous. You know, I was never sick, you know. I got a, if you could see, it ate a hole right through my head. I had a wow. hole. See this here? Wow. And they were going to remove my whole forehead. They were going to put a plate in my head. Thank wow. God I didn't do it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you're okay. Thank God. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, the last question is any thoughts on curing POTS? I'm so desperate. They said. I need to, I need to say that again. Any thoughts on curing POTS? What I'm not familiar with that. What is that? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar either. It just says yeah, P O T S. I don't know either. Well, um, if, if if tell me to, to not just the abbreviation. Let me look it up. So it says postural postural lactagyadia syndrome. P O T S. It's an abnormal increase in heart rate that occur that occurs after sitting up or standing. Some typical mm-hmm. sin- symptoms include dizziness and fainting it's sometimes known as postural ortho oh, oh, oh i know what you mean they're not getting enough blood pressure to the cranial area yeah well that could be, have something to do with your adrenal glands or your thyroid but what happens a lot of people that uh are not getting enough calories right when they sit up all of a sudden that happens to some people when they're fasting that's only temporary though so if it's a if it's a permanent condition you know um yeah, that could be helped. I mean, I would have to speak to a person like that, get more of a history. You mm-hmm. have to know their history. Yeah, I've had plenty of people that when they stood up or uh, or, or they, uh, they they came up from a lying down position, they used to get dizzy. Yeah, that that definitely can be helped. But I'd have to know more about it. That it's not you just don't give people a blanket answer. That could be coming from a number of different reasons. You know, yeah, it depends yeah. upon how old the person. If the person is eighty years old. It could be it could have a lot to do with circulation, heart in the arteries. So I, I would have to know more about that. OK, OK. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I think you're incredible, Dr. Bishy, and I've loved oh, talking you. to you. Thanks for everything you've shared. You're so open, logical, honest. I just love your approach. And I'm wondering to end off, do you have any advice for anybody out there who might be struggling no matter what age to get healthier? Maybe they're stuck in a rut. They don't know where to turn. Well, yeah, I, listen, don't be afraid. A lot of times people are afraid to make a commitment to changing their lifestyle because in their mind, they think they can't do it. They don't have the discipline or they don't have the willpower. That's a mistake. The best thing to do is make a commitment to do it. You know what I mean? And if you have to do it in increments, you know, start out by just leaving out all the processed food, which is really not that hard. You got a lot of different foods you could eat. Then when you leave out all the processed food, you could start to make, um, you know, go to another plateau, maybe, you know, um, 
reduce if you're overeating on the animal protein, reduce some of the animal protein, you know, make, don't be intimidated by the people that tell you don't eat any fruit. The sugar is like high fructose corn syrup. It's not. I know people that say that, that have a lot of a good that I that I respect, but I don't agree with that part of it. Um, you know, make sure you're drinking enough water, getting hydrated is very, very important. Uh, don't eat it. Even if you're, if a person's just starting out, you, just by making, drinking a juice every day or making a smoothie every day, it's going to help them. You know, don't eat late at night. Eating late at night is one of the worst things we could do. It's the worst. Don't eat, you know, we are circadian rhythms and controls our body clock. You know, when you're eating, to get up at four o'clock in the morning and eat, it's a mistake. If you're eating at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night and say, I don't go to bed at two in the morning. It's all based on daylight and darkness and the, the, the effect it has on the uh, optic nerve and, and, you know, its relationship to the hypothalamus gland. So, yeah, there's, um, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, good, there's a lot of people out there. I think that there's plenty of people out there that are good coaches, you know, you know, this, uh, you know, get start. Don't be afraid to jump in though. Don't be afraid to get started. You know what I mean? It's, it's not as hard as everybody thinks it is. Is it easy? No. But the rewards are fabulous. I have no doubt that I would not be here from all, from all the accidents I've had and things I've had, you know, if, um, if I wasn't living the way I'm living. And, you know, I, I'm still playing. You know, once I get rid of this, this piriformis problem or pinch nerve in between L5 S1, I'm still planning for the future. I'm planning on going back to running and doing all the things because I feel good. I don't feel any different now except for that than I did when I was 50. I really don't. I mean, my mind is sharp as a tack. I don't see any aging, anything happening to me, cognitively speaking. I don't see it. You know, not yet anyway. Mm -hmm. so, uh, no, I, I, I encourage everybody to, uh, to, uh, to get going uh, I've written a number of books. My one of my books is very easy. It's on Amazon. Very inexpensive. It's very simple. No scientific uh, nonsense. It just tells you how to adjust your lifestyle. People might want to try reading that. Your Healthy Journey by Dr. Fred Vichy. It's on Amazing. Amazon. And, and where can everybody? Simple, yeah, very go ahead. easy to follow. It helps you choose a lifestyle. All the way up to a raw diet. You want to eat a little bit of animal protein? It tells you how to do it. You want to eat a vegan diet? It tells you how to do it. You got to watch out. A lot of people are quoting abstract science. That is a snapshot of a particular situation. It's not a video of the whole process. You know, that's what people got to look at, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well eat said. a raw diet. Listen, you made a good choice. I'll put it that way, you know. Make sure you're eating a variety of different foods. Don't be afraid to skip a meal or skip no need for a day or so. Don't be afraid of that. It's amazing what you could do. I my, my experience with fasting, my personal experience is awesome. It was awesome. The things I experienced, you know, I, I was going to school and a professor made a statement you couldn't go 15 days without, uh, you know, without eating and drinking water. I was shocked. I had already gone 30 days and I was trying to get some, you know, accredited credentials. So what happens is that uh, I didn't know what to say. Now, the woman that was a professor, she was overweight. She had bad skin. And meanwhile, she was telling people what to eat. So what happens, she brought, brought it up again. I said, well, wait a minute. I said, uh, you know, there's places in Europe. And I mentioned Otto Buchinger and Buchinger, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the clinics in Germany where people were fasting. She's not at, I don't believe that. And she said, do you know any, do you know anybody that's gone 15 days without food? So I hesitated, you know, I looked around. I said, yeah, I, I've done it. She said, Mr. Bishy, you're lying. Wow. She said, you're not telling the truth. And she says, you know, I suggest that you don't take my class. I got up with the best move I ever made. I got up, I walked out. It was ridiculous. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Wow. Unreal. Yeah. Wow. Well, where can everybody find you who wants to, you know, website or are you active on any social media? What's the best place in your books or on Amazon? I'll link those below. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right now I had somebody, a followers work me. My website is not, I, I'm getting somebody to fix up my website. They can call my, uh, my office number. 
you know, it's uh, 718-979-7956. Uh, and leave a message on my office number. I'll call them back. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks so much. And you know, Brad. but listen, the thing is now, people got to be serious about making a change. And I, it can really help a lot of people. But they got to be serious about a lifestyle change. And I'm not going to tell them to take some vitamin or some one thing and it's going to, you know, going to help with uh, a specific issue. They got to be ready to change. They're ready to change. You know, there's plenty. There's uh, plenty of help out there. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you've been great. And again, thank you so much. And to the viewers, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If it added some value to your day, give it a big thumbs up right now. Make sure you subscribe if you don't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care.